Brutus, be quiet, will you? Mark, he's dreaming. Yeah. About that bewitching female in the spotted coat, I'll bet you. You think that's why he really won, Mark, huh? You think the female made the difference? Honey, females always make the difference. Your Christmas Eve selection includes music, fun and laughter from Cannon and Ball, Krista Berg, uh, Skoda, Kim Wilde and Brother Beyond. Cannon and Ball, Christmas Eve on ITV at 5.15. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas, everybody! Next on Time to Use a 3 2, one Christmas special after the break. It's a world champion. It has fuel injection. It's turbocharged. It has a 2.9 litre engine. It's a race winner. It's the British Rally Champion. It has four wheel drive. It's a diesel. It's a hatchback. A saloon. Or an estate car. There is only one Ford Sierra. filling up with proper programs. They are destroying everything in their path. Please stay tuned for further development. That's more like it. The SCS sale starts Boxing Day with hundreds of huge reductions on a wide range of top quality suites and interest-free credit. It's the big one. It's the SCS sale. I perhaps... Sir. Adams... Sir. Bought it. This book. <laughs> Silex. Vix Silex with the famous Vix Vapors gives relief in seconds and it lasts for hours. Barton, see me after school. Briggs. What's going to work fast and have a long-lasting effect on you, Barton? Sinex works in seconds. Lasts for hours. If you thought Daz was unbeatable on whites, I've got news for you. New Daz. It's even tougher on dirt. I've got four girls, um, so I have four times as much dirty washing to do. You should see the state of them when they come home from school. Absolutely filthy. So we asked Sue, who's always used Daz, to try new Daz. Well, I didn't think I'd say this, because I'm very happy with my old Daz. But this new Daz is definitely better. These socks were absolutely filthy, covered with muddy lines from the skipping rope. Even the old Daz wouldn't have got them out, but now they're brilliant. Everything is so much whiter, especially Haley's clothes. Being the little one, she gets all the hand-me-downs, and they've come up like new. So, Sue, will you swap new Daz for your old Daz? <laughs> no chance. If it gets their clothes white, I'm sticking to it. New Daz. It's even tougher on dirt for even whiter whites. For three generations, mums have been sterilising babies' bottles and teats with Milton. 
And nowadays, you can get Milton in convenient tablet form for effective protection from germs. Nothing is safer than the Milton method. Three generations of protection you can trust. Hello again, and I have a card here, a postcard, asking me to wish Mrs. Betty Rush a very happy birthday today. Congratulations, Betty, on your half-century from all your family and friends. And now a 3 to one Christmas special. <laughs> Room with 12 views, a home on wheels, and a double journey. These are some of the prizes that can be won on this Christmas edition of 3 to 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, meet your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy That's Christmas. it. Marvellous. Have a terrific time. We really hope... That... I'm Ted Rogers, your host of Christmas Present, and we want you to get loads of great presents tomorrow. I already started to get mine. I got a terrific present. It's a season ticket to Jim Davidson's weddings. <laughs> great. And I had a lovely card yesterday, you'll never guess, from the heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. On the front, there's a picture of a robin and saying, I want a divorce! <laughs> But whatever you do, be careful this Christmas about drinking and driving. You can't blame the police. They're after everybody. They caught me the other day. They bumped into me on a pedestrian crossing, sent me flying through the air, 25 yards, straight through a pub window. Yeah, they pinched me. Yeah. For jaywalking, leaving the scene of the accident, flying without a pilot's license, breaking and entering, and drinking after hours. <laughs> now, what can you say? but it's a special Christmas 321, boys and girls, mums and dads, this year, because we have three couples who are playing for charity. All the prizes and the prize money will go to a charity of their choice. They're going to be waiting over there to come on just at this moment with our lovely Linda Lee Lewis and, of course, our Christmas Scrooge, you know who that is, Dusty Bing. Come and say hello now. Oh. And there he is. There he is, the dreaded Dusty Bin, of course, our booby prize, and we really don't want him to be one today, because, as you know, all our contestants get if they win him is a brand new dustbin, that's all. But, Dusty, just supposing you were one today, how would you celebrate? Oh. <laughs> so let, let that be a warning to you. Go on, off you go, you scoundrel. Off you go. <laughs> Hey, Linda. Mm. Hello, Ted. How are you, my darling? I'm fine. Always lovely you. to see you. Thank you terrific. Very much. Hey, it's a bit, bit drafty yeah, for Christmas, isn't it? But never mind. <laughs> so, listen, what have you been up to? Because I know that uh, you're not doing a pantomime this year yourself. No, I'm not. I'm going up to Scotland to see my folks, uh -huh. which will be nice for a change. But I did do the new Statesman for Yorkshire. Oh, which was lovely. lovely. Yeah, Rick Mayo. Yes, yeah, he smashing. was very Great show. nice as well. Great he show. Was. You he enjoy was it? Yes, I did. Okay, yes, and where, where are people? Because they're special contestants, aren't they? They are. Where are they from? We've got fire, ambulance, and police. Oh, flames first aid and fuzz. <laughs> Who are they? All right, from the London Fire Brigade, we have Jean Ash and Jenny Craig. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Come on. And from the Strathclyde Police Service, we have Kenny and Hazel McIntosh. And from the West Yorkshire Ambulance Service, we have Janet Hurst and Stuart McPherson. And there are contestants, Ted. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. And folks, thank you very much indeed for coming and playing the game. We, we hope you really all do well. I'd like to say hello, first of all, to Jean Ash and Jennifer Craig. And uh, you're with the Fire Service. That's a good name, isn't it, Jean, for fireman? Ash? That's right. Lovely. And, and whereabouts are you from? I mean, in London somewhere, which, where are you based? East Greenwich. In East Greenwich. East East London. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, tell me, have you ever had to carry a lady in a nighty on one of those ladders? I haven't had that opportunity, is it? I mean, you have to go through the same routine, don't you, Jenny? Yes, really? exactly. Yeah. I mean, it must be easier for you than the men, I mean, coming down those poles, must it? <laughs> <laughs> really? Anyway, it's, it's nice that you're both here. And what, what charity are you both playing for today? We're playing for the Great Ormond Street Wishing Hole Pill. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> I was in, in there as a kid, and it's a marvellous place. They do terrific work, as indeed everybody does. Now we've got Kenny and Hazel McIntosh from Strathclyde. Whereabouts exactly, Ken? Rutherglen, just outside so Glasgow. Rutherglen, yes, I know that well indeed. And uh, you must, must realise, of course, that everything you say tonight will be taken down and used in evidence. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Until you press your buzzer, of course. You're married. How long have you been married, you two? Nine years. Nine? Uh -huh. 
just see their honeymoon, eh? going straight to the bridal suite, then a fortnight undercover. <laughs> <laughs> and what charity are you both playing for? British Bone Marrow Appeal. British Bone Marrow Appeal again. Sturdy work, good stuff. Good luck tonight. And we've got Janet Hurst and Stuart McPherson, who are from down the road apiece. Is that right, Stuart? Whereabouts are you from? I'm from Bradford. From Bradford. See, I know that when he says Bradford. That's <laughs> lovely, that. that. That's terrific. It's only a hypothetical question I'm going to ask you, Janet, actually. Right. And, I mean, if you had to give Robert Redford the kiss of life, would you forget about business and make it last a bit longer? No, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> who are you playing for tonight, anyway? British Heart Foundation. British Heart Foundation. Sturdy work. Great stuff. <laughs> Smashing. And, uh, and jolly good luck to all of you. We want you to do really well tonight. It's a special edition, as I say, of 3-2-1. And we're only having one round in the quiz, but we're playing for £100 for each correct answer. It's 20 questions, so you've got a chance to really build up the score and do well for, you, for everybody. You know it's question and answer. I ask the question, when you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer, wait until I say your name, and answer. OK, if you're wrong, I'll say on offer. The other couple have a chance to hit the buzzer and go for the question. OK, good luck to you. And here we go with the first question. According to the popular song, where did the singer see mummy kissing Santa Claus? Kenny and Hazel. Where? Under the mistletoe. Under the mistletoe. Just about came in. Yes, absolutely right. Anyway, according to the Bible, in which town was Jesus born? That's Gene and Jenny? Jerusalem. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. So it's on offer. And Kenny and Hazel? Bethlehem. Bethlehem is absolutely right, yes. Which... Which royal person is said to have introduced the Christmas tree from Germany? Which royal person is said to have introduced? Okay, Kenny and Hazel. Queen Victoria. It wasn't. We have to say no. A bit nitpicking there. It was Prince Albert, her husband. But never mind, you were close. Well done, Ken. Next question. In the song The Twelve Days of Christmas, on which day did the singer receive gold rings? Stuart and Janet. Five. Fifth. Fifth, indeed. That's right. In a Christmas carol of all the trees that are in the wood, which one bears the crown? Kenny and Hazel. The Holly. The Holly is right. Well done. Name the house in Norfolk where the Queen is spending Christmas this year. Stuart and Janet. Balmoral. Uh, that's wrong, so it's on offer. That's Kenny and Hazel. Sandringham. Sandringham is correct, yes. How many ships came sailing by on Christmas Day? Kenny and Hazel have gone. Three. With. Sorry? Three ships. Three ships is right, yes. Christmas Day in the morning. Which pantomime character was th three times Lord Mayor of London? Kenny and Hazel. Dick Whittington. Next question. Name the mean character in Charles Dickens' book A Christmas Carol. And Stuart and Janet have gone for it. Scrooge. Scrooge is right. Ebenezer Scrooge. According to the carol, when did good King Wenceslas look out? And Kenny and Hazel? On the Feast of Stephen. On the Feast of Stephen. That's right, which is Boxing Day. St. Stephen, the patron saint of leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Frankincense and myrrh were given by two of the kings. What did the third one give? And Stuart and Janet? Gold. Gold is absolutely right, yes. Next question. Name the seasonal song made popular by Bing Crosby, which was first... OK, Gene and Jenny have gone for it. White Christmas. White Christmas, yes. First heard in the film. <laughs> the film Holiday Inn, as opposed to White Christmas. There we are. Next question is, what is the colour of the flower called the Christmas rose? Kenny and Hazel. White. White is correct. Which pantomime character is the mother of Aladdin? Kenny and Hazel again. Widow Twanky. Widow Twanky is right. Next question. Give the name of Harry Belafonte, his number one hit. Ah, it's Gene and Jenny gone for it. What is it? The child is born. That is wrong. So it's on offer. I've got to read the whole... All right, you've gone for it, Kenny and Hazel. Mary's Boy Child. Mary's Boy Child, yes. Christmas 1957. Well done, <laughs> Kenny and Hazel again. Good. <laughs> now, in the story of Ali Baba, what is the magic phrase which opens the robber's cave? That's Gene and Jenny. Open Sesame. Open Sesame is right. Next question is, what is the date of Twelfth Night? That's Gene and Jenny again. 5th of January. January. Uh, it's wrong, so it's on offer. And it's Stuart and Janet? 6th of January. 6th of January, that's right. Who was top of the pops 19 years ago with his song, Two Little Boys? Kenny and Hazel. Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris is correct. That's right. It's a long time ago, that. Which pantomime does Dandini change places with the prince? <laughs> Kenny and Hazel. Prince Charming. Uh, no, that's wrong. On offer. Who's going to go for it? Nobody? Well, I'm afraid we're out of time. That was Cinderella. Dandini <laughs> changes place with the prince. And this is our 20th question. In which pantomime is there a wicked magician called Abanaza? <laughs> Kenny and Hazel. Aladdin. Aladdin is correct, and that is it. The end of our 20 questions? Yes. <laughs> now, what do we have here?
He's up. We've got Gene and Jenny there on 300 pounds. We've got Stuart and Janet on 500 pounds. No doubt about the winners. There are police folk, Kenny and Hazel, 1,300 pounds they got. Well, there we go. We have to say goodbye to Jean and Jenny at this point, but 300 pounds not too bad, is it, really? There we go. Thank I'm sure much. they're going to enjoy that. Whoever, it's got to be the charity that gets that. They're, they're worth a fortune, you know those things. It's been smashing having you with us. Hope you're going to stay and enjoy yourselves, yeah? Sure. Thanks a lot, Jean. Thank Jen, take care. Thanks a lot. Mm. Give them a round of applause, folks, will you? We're going away for a couple of minutes. See you soon. Three, two, one. Don't go far. <laughs> Holy Jeeves. Uh, not quite, sir. How did I fare? You are 35 over par, sir. Oh. The golf considerably below par. That's the ticket, Jeeves. Time for a snifter, I think. <laughs> you know, Jeeves, compared with some of those old-fashioned sherries, I've always thought the light, delicate quality of Croft Original are that superior. <laughs> Rather like my golf, wouldn't you say? I would indeed. <laughs> How many balls did we lose today, Jeeves? Oh, I don't think we were losing them, sir. I thought we were giving them away. <laughs> Croft Original Pale Cream Sherry. One instinctively knows when something is right. Now it's time for another of those witty Heineken commercials. So if you want to nip out and make a cup of tea, now's your chance. <laughs> oh, hello, Fett. Haven't you even started yet? Yeah, but per it's, it's all preparation, isn't it? Well, if it's not done by the time I get back from Mother's, there'll be big trouble. So you see, Heineken even refreshes the pets other beers cannot reach. Munchkins. They're after that special McVitie's recipe for Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> I'll show them. It's McVitie's secret combination of lush, light sponge, smooth, plain chocolate, and the real Jaffa orangey bit that just builds them over. I won't let anyone steal the secret of McVitie's Jaffa Cakes. Stone Pictures presents Roger Rabbit and Eddie Valiant in a triangle of trouble. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. A Steven Spielberg presentation, a Robert Zemeckis film. Uh, welcome to part two of three, two, one, our Christmas special. And in this part of the show, remember playing for charity. We've got Stuart and Janet, who are from Leeds and Bradford, right? Playing against Kenny and Hazel, who are from Rutherglen, Strathclyde in Scotland. Now, you know what's going to happen, folks. At the end of each one of our items we're about to show you, our guests are going to come here to the table, leave a clue object, and read just a couple of lines of a rhyme. When we've got three here on the table, you have to choose one to reject if you are the lucky couple who gets through the elimination question. Good luck to you and good luck to all your charities. On with item number one, straight away over to Linda Lee Lewis. This Christmas Eve, let me take your hand and lead you into our panto land. Through four of your favourites we will go, and with each of the cast, a face you will know. So let us begin just outside a wood, Nottingham Castle with Robin Hood. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls! <laughs> and in case you're wondering, no, 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 it's not Claire Rayner in a brown frock. <laughs> it's me, Friar Tuck, and I was very nearly late. I bumped into Cyril Smith on the way here, and between us we blocked all three lanes of the M1. <laughs> in both directions. <laughs> oh, 
sounds like Little John. Oh, Robin's, Robin's in a bad mood today, isn't he? I was a bit worried about the new sheriff arriving, but hey, by the way, he didn't do all this to you, did he? No, you? no, I got this lot in the pub next door when I ordered a pint of cider. Oh, <laughs> By the way, uh, do you like the new robe? <laughs> I've got the A.B. habit. You mean Abby? <laughs> no, A.B. My tail is Jewish. <laughs> oh. It'd be a lot better if you weren't so fat. No, no, not from this longer. You see, I'm on the new F pun diet. I can eat anything beginning with F. Such as? Four loaves, five fishes, 15 eggs. Oh, Maybe. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Hold on, mate. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, that husband of mine, I got Jack. Yeah, he was taken to hospital with multiple injuries. Uh. Oh, what happened? Well, he was leaving Roma's return last night and somebody trod on his fingers. Uh. Who'd do a thing like that? I did. And I'll tell you why I deserved it. He went to town with that old cow and he came back with a handful of beans. Oh, sounds like a good exchange for uh, bed lids. Just... Oh, 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 oh. oh, here comes the new sheriff. Oh, oh. oh. Thank you. Please don't get up. Don't get up. Hello, boys and girls. This is quite a thrill for me. I've, uh, I've never been in a pantomime before. Hey, that's rubbish I saw in the Tory party conference. <laughs> uh, what do you all do in Sherwood Forest? Well, we rob the rich and give to the poor. Oh, really? I do just the opposite. <laughs> oh, what's that? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Whatever it is, I'll soon bring it down. Uh, Just hang on while I reload. <laughs> oh, 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 my God! Sure going, then. You nearly had my eye out and look what you've done to my mask. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, the shock of it made me go round and round in ever decreasing circles. Uh, you know they say if you do that, you'll eventually oh, disappear up your own. I know, I know. <laughs> well, listen, why, why do you always stand like that? Well, how do you think I get all the, all the top notes in Phantom of the Opera? <laughs> well, who are you, anyway? I'm Peter Pan. What are you doing here? I don't know. I think I took a wrong turn in at Luton Airport. <laughs> I'm looking for Never Neverland. Oh. Well, you found it. Under me, everybody lives on credit. <laughs> By the way, did you vote for me? No. Nah. Eh, well, it was somebody just like you, kid. Nah. <laughs> now you're all here. Can I explain my new policies as sheriff? Firstly, this lady is not for turning. Uh, I used to say that to my husband, Jack, when he used to dig me in the back in bed at night. <laughs> of course. I expect you to pull your socks up. Yes. yes. Put your best foot forward. Yes. Put your shoulder to the wheel. Yes. Put your backs to the wall. Yes. And your noses to the grindstone. <gasps> That's the good news. And now for the bad. Oh. I've sold Sherwood Forest to property developers. Oh, no. Yes, I expect you all to move out. Oh, no. Hey, I'm not moving. I thought you'd say that, so I bought my own bailiff with me. Oh. Bailiff! Oh, bailiff. Oh. 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 Remove this offensive person. You can have me any time. Well, of course. Mm. Oh, yeah. Jeff Capes and Hilary O'Neill, and I'd like to say, of course, we had Alan Stewart, Aidan J. Harvey, and Felix Boness in that little scene there. We'll be seeing them a bit later on. Good to see you, folks. Yeah. These folks here, as you know, are playing for charity. They're hoping to do, do so well. They've done good so far with the money. They what are you leaving yeah. them for a clue? Well, I've got a piece of tow rope. A piece of tow, tow rope? rope. Here's a clue. And the rhyme says what? Four seats and wheels, the travel itch, could be the chance to make your pitch. There you go. That's very easy, isn't it? <laughs> Be fair, Janet. Only up time. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, Neil. Thanks, Hi, love. Mm. Have a great time. Good time, Jeff. Have a good Christmas. God bless you. Happy Christmas. Oh. Now. Is it a bit early, Ken? Be fair. No, very early. No idea, no idea about that yet? None at all. What do you think, Janet Stewart? Um, Too obvious. Too obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be a cow. Can't be a cow. <laughs> right, we're going to have item number two. This time, it's Snow White. And we begin with a song. 
Mrs. Snow White. Oh, no, I'm Miss Snow White. Miss, even better. What do you mean? Well, I'm a reporter from the Sun newspaper, and I've reason to believe you're living with seven different men. <laughs> I can see the headline now, My Seven Nights of Sensuous Passion. Oh, no, no, they're not my men. I'm just the housekeeper. In fact, five of them have got wives of their own now. A likely story. I'd like to meet them. Well, and so you shall. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm Dopey Edwards. <laughs> I soar like an eagle and drop like a stone. <laughs> well, aren't you afraid that you'll do yourself some permanent damage? Oh, no, I've got a way around about that. Well, what's that then? I'll land on my head. <laughs> uh, Dopey, Dopey, this is a reporter from the sun. Oh, oh, I take the sun. Oh, so you're a sun reader then? No, I can't read. That's why I take the sun. <laughs> and uh, this is his wife, Janet. Hi. 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 Have me on page three of your newspaper. Only trouble is with these trees, I'll stick out a lot further than Samantha Foxdown. <laughs> See the headline now Porter's Front Teeth uses ski jump. <laughs> well, I must say, they don't seem very well matched. Well, if you think they're ill matched, just wait till you meet the next two. <laughs> oh, do. <laughs> I'm grumpy. Hey, I'm always grumpy than us, oh I. Hey, hey, must be this that I've got a face like a melted welly. <laughs> well, look, how come you're always so grumpy? Well, you're not my wife, have you, Dot? <laughs> hey, what I say? Oh, 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 do you know? Oh, do you know? I think it's all this smoking that's starting me grow. Oh, she's right, then, us. She's got so much tar on her lungs that when she dies, they're going to recycle them and resurface the M1. <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh, I have got a bit of a bad chest. Ooh. A bit of a bad chest? Mm. I've seen you topless. You've got a flaming horrible chest. Oh, I'll say. <laughs> Come on, you can buy me a bag now. the headline now. now. Come on, let me think now. Uh, gamekeeper lets off steam in laundrette. <laughs> oh, that's it. Now, listen, have you ever liked one more than the other? Well, I've always had a soft spot for one of them, but he's found another now. Maybe <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you know, I just bought a microwave bed there. I got six hours of sleep in three minutes. <laughs> I want to tell that again, because I don't think they have it. <laughs> anyway, here's the wife. <laughs> Hello, darling! Housewife, superstar, darlings. I like small men. I mean that in a caring way. <laughs> oh, in fact, my husband Norm was very small. Yeah, if, in fact, he was so small, he had turn ups in his underpants. Isn't that spooky? Day Madness says, Let's be frank. Okay. Oh. Now listen, you said only five of them were married. That's right. Perhaps you'd like to meet one of the bachelors. <laughs> oh, boys and girls! <laughs> Sneezy notes. Achoo! <laughs> well, I'm having a sneezing, buzzing time. I caught this cold by sitting in a draft. But you won't have to worry about drafts because I'm going to show you how to make your own double glazing by simply using the tops of four cornflake boxes, a yogurt carton, and a pair of Valerie Singleton's old knickers. <laughs> Get down, sir. In fact, here's what I made earlier. Not only can this keep out drafts, but I'm told it can withstand the pressure of 500 pounds! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see. <laughs> Blew me hat off. You know what? I can see the headline. Naughty Noakes beats the pain barrier. <laughs> now look, come on. Don't you have any happy couples? Oh, yes. These next two get on extremely well. <laughs> 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 I'm Doc Dudley, yeah, it's great, yeah. I'm the only one of the dwarfs that doesn't have to do this part on my knees. <laughs> In fact, I was very small when I was young. I'll never use the front door, I'll use the cat flap. <laughs> oh, God, it's great, that, isn't it? Anyway, I'd like to meet my wife. She's coming on now. <laughs> hello, darlings, all right, babes? Yeah, hello, yeah. Oh. Hello, darling, here. Yeah. We've just come back from our honeymoon, haven't we, darling, yeah? And this sexy little man here, he spent the whole fortnight in bed, yeah? I had no choice. I tried to carry her across the threshold, and I got a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, there's one dwarf I haven't interviewed. I'd like to meet the other bachelor. Oh, of course you can. Here he comes now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody! <laughs> Hi! I'm happy! Diddy Doddy, yes. I want a wonderful Christmas Eve for doing something daft. Something daft like, like going up to new <laughs> Rudolf Nuria, setting fire to his tights and saying, ha ha, how's that for a bag of chestnuts? <laughs> and, uh, and may they be hot ones as well. And <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful Christmas Eve also for doing something daft like, like covering boy George in flaky pastry, making him walk down the street with his hands on his hips and saying, how's that for a mince pie? And <laughs> what a wonderful Christmas Eve for simply wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I can bless with more than my share of happiness. Sotty bye, everybody! Sotty bye! Linda Marilyn and Bernie Clifton, lovely to see you folks. My there. real hair, Ted, I of must course. tell you. Yeah, so what's the clue this time? I've brought you this money box, Ted, as the clue. Okay. An old money box is the clue, and what does the rhyme say? It said, this Christmas treat could bring you cheer, a tidy sum for the whole year. There we have it. That's number two. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Nolan, Bernie. Mm. Have a good time. Happy Christmas. Thank Thanks, you. Bernie. Bye, Linda. In fact... It's a wooden collecting tin, is what that is. Ken, any idea? What do you think? A flipping stone's like the bin. Right, so one more on the table, then we have to make up our mind what we're going to reject if you get through the question. So we will have item number three. This time it's the Sleeping Beauty. Surprise, surprise! The unexpected hits you between the eyes. Yes, it's all. Oh, oh. Now, as you know, Sleeping Beauty went to bed and she didn't wake up for over a hundred years. Well, her alarm clock was made in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> a 
only joking. Anyway, our prince will be here any moment. Here he comes now. All right. Damn parachutes. <laughs> Gosh. When I was just a little boy, I asked my mummy, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Yes. <laughs> ah. I wonder if I should wake her and tempt her to a royal nut cluster. <laughs> oh, hello, your royal chocolate. Surprise, surprise. My God, it's her. The human race's answer to the laughing hyena. Give <laughs> me a scream. Listen, your imperial leather. We've got three sleeping beauties here. And we want you to pick which one you want to take on your blind date. Oh, I get it. Jolly good, it's a game. It's like, um, three, two, one. Uh, three, two, three. I must ask Ted next time I see him how he does that. Uh, I, I'll choose number three. Yeah, we've got a royal wally here. <laughs> All right, well, you turned out number one, who was the lovely Suzanne Mitzi. <laughs> Fine example of British architecture. Yeah, well, we also turned down number two, who was the lovely Maria Whitaker. Naughty, naughty. Yes, but nicey, nicey. Now we get to the one you've chosen. Oh, goody, goody. Number three. All the way from up there in Granada land. Yes, it's the lovely Mavis. <laughs> oh, your testicles. Oh, your testimonials. I just... Oh, uh, well, your royal architecturalness. What do you think? One is certain, one has dropped one. Well, which one's going to choose the car then? Come on, which one? Uh, go on, me. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's a romantic name. Paris. I don't know what Derek will say. Yeah, we don't have to wait till next week to see how they go on because with the magic of Panto, yes, we can go forward a week and see just what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Well now, Chucks, how did you get on? Was it as miserable as you both look? Well, let's see, shall we? When I first arrived at her place, I greeted her by kissing her on the hand. Well, I bet you wish you hadn't, because I'd just been gutting the fish for out and cat. <laughs> Over the next two hours, all I saw was the top of her head. She wouldn't stop curtsying. Well, it wasn't curtsying. It was just that in my hurry to get dressed, I'd fixed my suspenders to my pop socks and I couldn't straighten up. Several times during the day, one felt she fancied one. Well, I did, because, you see, he was so polite, he kept helping me across the road, even when I didn't want to go. But you see, I had to keep paying for everything. When one is royalty, one doesn't carry a penny on one. Well, that was okay until one wanted to go to the loo. And finally, Mavis, tell me something sweetheart. Do you think your day together has had any effect on you? Well, actually, I didn't feel it had any effect on me whatsoever. And you, Charles? Oh, is that well, Stella? <laughs> Well, thank you, Charles and Mavis. There they are. There's Alan Stewart and Aidan J. Harvey. It's nice to see you, fellas. Great stuff. I feel really stupid standing like this. Please. <laughs> you look stupid. Look. Good to see you. What are you leaving these folks here as a clue? Right, we've got a football sock. A football sock. Oh, a long oh, football sock. Beautiful. Yes. It's a long one. And the rhyme says what? It's a giveaway, a simple clue. So it should be child's play for you. That's the third one tonight. Alan Stewart, Aidan J. Harvey. Thanks, guys. All Thank the best. Happy Christmas. Have a good one. Good enough. <laughs> ah. 
Now, Ken's pondering there. I think the boxes have been. You do? Any idea what this one is? I'm going to no? You've got to reject, reject one if you get through the question now. So which one are you going to choose to get rid of? This is the box. Sock. Yeah. You want to get rid of the sock if you get through? Okay. And you're going to get rid of the box? Hazel, is that okay with you? Fine. Okay. You get rid of the sock. You get rid of the box if you get through the question, which is here. So, folks, please put your hands beside the buzzer, not over it, just beside it. That's it. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer, remember, and answer. Here's the question. This evergreen shrub is known as Viscum album. It grows as a partial parasite on various trees. It has a waxy white berries and leathery leaves. It, ah, Stuart and Janet's gone for it. Mistletoe. It's mistletoe, yes, you're part of it, Honestly, Janet, I could tell you wanted to go then, but you didn't know whether to or not, did you? <laughs> no. Marvellous. Good for you. And I think they were rather pleased about that one too. Well, good luck. You're going through to the big stuff, hopefully to take home a good prize tonight, which means we have to say goodbye to Kenny and Hazel, who've done terrific anyway. Here's the older, the dusty bin. And what did they win? Remind us, please, Linda. £1,300. £1,300. How bad? How bad? How bad? Thanks so much. Take care. Take care. Well, now, Janet, hey, that, was, that was good, wasn't it? It, it was wonderful. You, that, John, did you know what it was? You, well, that's terrific. That means you're through, as I say, to where the big stuff is. Now it really gets difficult, because if they all sounded like the bin, there's two more to come, and believe me, they'll sound like that as well. However, remind us, you have got rid of the sock, haven't you? Yeah. OK, we're going away just for a couple of minutes. We'll be back to see exactly what that is. See you very soon. Three, two, one. <laughs> This is the listening bank, right? Yes, it is. You gave my older brother a vector account, right? Um, right. Good. Well, I have one a new kind of bank account. You want a vector account? Uh, no. I said I want a new kind of bank account. Well, first, I want a cash card. A cash card? So I can get my money out 24 hours a day. Provided the money's there, you can't spend what you don't have. Oh, yeah, but I also need interest on the account. Interest? And I want to get discounts from shops and stores. Discounts? That's 1C. 1C. The new Live Cash account gives you 24 hour cash, interest, and discount vouchers for the cinema, pizzas, shoes, and records. And finally, I'd like a checkbook when I start work. <laughs> when you start work? Right. Right. Thanks for listening. Have a nice day. And you, matey. Live cash from Midland. The listening bank. Milky Way, whipped light and fluffy so it won't fill you up, and covered in milk chocolate. Aren't the pirates looking younger these days? Milky Way, the sweet you can eat between meals without ruining your appetite. The B&Q sale is now on, with an extra 10% off everything, today and all Christmas week, only at B&Q. That he needs a little lubrication. Thanks, I'll have him a huge export. It's part three of our Christmas 321, boys and girls. We've got to this part of the show, and Stuart and Janet of the ambulance service have won through from Leeds and Bradford. And we've rejected, right, the long football sock. Have you thought about it in the break, what it could be? I know what your hope no. it is. 
Well, I think that's been. Hey, Jay Harvey, Alan Stewart brought you in the long football sock and said it's a giveaway, a simple clue, so it should be child's play for you. Now then, is it? Is it indeed? Okay, the long football sock. It's a giveaway, a simple clue. The giveaway, of course, suggests giving somebody a present. Remember, the clue object was a long sock. Now, this kind of thing that you hang up for presents, you know, at this time of year, that leads to, so it should be child's play for you. And it would have been child's play for lots of young children as well if they get this little lot. Take a look at this prize. It would have been the biggest collection of toys even Santa's ever seen. For instance, there's a rocking horse giving hours of fun to both him and her, all the cuddly toys any young miss could hold, a toy computer for the whiz kid of tomorrow, and a sweet shop to keep the customers happy. And that's just part of this fabulous collection, guaranteed to give days of pleasure for months to come. Sorry about that, but uh, that's all we've really got to start thinking about, of course, the bin. We've got two more items to show you, so uh, just think about what you're rejecting next time. Good luck as we go on and have <laughs> item number four. Back to Panda, of course, again, and this time it is Babes in the Wood. Quick, quick, I'm desperate. Can you help me? But I'm, I'm just a simple woodcutter. What's your problem? Well, someone's got to got me into trouble. Well, don't look at me. I'm not that simple. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, please, yourselves. No, I mean, my three babies that were in the pram, they've gone. They've disappeared into the wood. Oh, this is a job for a local policeman. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, oh, right, evening all. <laughs> What's a big one? I don't fancy stuffing that for Christmas. <laughs> I'm PG4 of the flying squad. Oh, that thing can't fly, can it? Oh, no, 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 it can't fly. Right. Oh, thank goodness for that. We've got enough problems with the pigeons. Oh, now, uh, what's your problem then, missus? Oh, I wonder. Can you help me get some babies? <laughs> uh, no, we're not allowed to have fun on duty, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I do mean those babies. I mean the babies that were in my pram. They've gone. They've gone and lost themselves in the wood. Oh, well, you're very lucky because he's a sniffer bird. And have you got anything belonging to the babies that he can sniff at? Oh, yes. Here's a nappy that one of them was wearing before. Has <laughs> <laughs> it given him a clue? No, but it won't half make his eyes water. <laughs> I know where the babies are. <laughs> it's all clear now. You can come out. Yeah. Oh. Kill. Thank goodness for that. I was squashing me barm cake. Yeah. Kill. Here. You can tell him to come out now and all. All right, yeah. Ooh. Hey, you with the oh. teeth. Come here. Do I need me? Baldy, baldy, Jameson here. <laughs> Ew, why do you always sound so rough and ready? I come from a rough area and I can prove it. How? These are my idiot mittens. <laughs> hey, this is just like that program. Whose baby? Yeah. yeah. Whose baby are you? I don't know. My mum and dad are still arguing about it. Aye. And when I was born, my parents were on holiday. Mine were on the honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what weight were you when you were born? Eleven and a half pounds. Boy, that's enormous. What did your mum say? Nothing. She didn't speak for three days afterwards. <laughs> Funny you should say that. I heard my mummy say the other day, Itchy kitchy coochie coo, Edums dedums, want your little tummy tickle? Edums <laughs> didum, want a little tummy tickle? What does that mean? I don't know, but the milkman seems to be quite happy at the time. <laughs> Good 
to see you. Christopher Biggins and the touring actor, <laughs> Felix Bonet, who Thank does, you. you know, Wogan does his warm up three times a week. That's not bad. <laughs> What's the clue you're well, leaving them? This is a clue, it's a flag. It's a blue a Peter flag, flag, is what it is. Blue Peter flag, yes. Right. Yes. And Chris, what does their rhyme say? The rhyme is many channel crossings there will be, a dozen ways you can go to sea. S double E, though. Here we are. That is the fourth one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Janet has gone completely. No We're problem. going to thank and say good luck. Happy Christmas, Chris. And to you. Speaking of it, it's got back. Love the moment. Ta da. Have a good one. <laughs> Stuart hasn't a clue. Janet, have you? <laughs> well, I, I can read one of these two again if you've got no idea about that one. Anything you'd like to refresh your memory on? There's yeah, we'll it. go for the box. Yeah, you want to hear Can that we, again? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll read it again. Okay, yes, the wooden collecting box came in from Linda Nolan and Bernie Clifton, who said this Christmas treat could bring you cheer, a tidy sum for the whole year. Now, what does it sound like this time? It sort of changes every time you hear it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, we've got one more to come yet, remember, so you've just got to reject one right now. What idea have you got? The box. Yeah? Public opinion. Okay, you're going to reject then the wooden collecting box which came in from Linda Nolan, Bernie Clifton, who said, this Christmas treat could bring you cheer, a tidy sum for the whole year. Yeah, and keep them crossed. Keep them crossed. The Christmas treat could bring you cheer. It sounds like somebody's obviously giving something to somebody, but is it you? Remember, the clue object was a charity box which leads to a tidy sum for the whole year. But as you know, if you don't give a Christmas treat to a certain section of a community, then your garden path is likely to look very untidy <laughs> at least one day of the week. Dustman, Dusty Bin, yeah. you've done it! <laughs> OK, so that's good. Your instinct was right. Certainly the audience is was. Dusty Bin's gone, which means a good prize is going to go home to your charity tonight. We're going to have item number five. Now, once again, it's the whole company with a number called Two Can Have a Party. <laughs> There you go. That's the third one and the final one tonight. You're lucky they've got rid of the bin. This guy, he sort of uh, baffles me a bit. Any idea who that is? Yeah. How about the audience? Know. Anybody know who it is? Who is it? Oh, two of it. Let's have a quick pipe, is it? Yeah. 
Never in a million. Yeah. I tell you what, Adrian was with us, of course, on, on our Olympic show, if you remember, and they went through and won some terrific right. stuff just before he went off and did that fabulous job. Wasn't that a great job? Yeah. Adrian Morehouse, cheers, Adrian. God bless. Good luck. Now then, well, what about that one there? Any idea what it could be? A small bottle of ouzo and uh, vodka. What do you reckon? Greece, Russia. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you know the bin's gone. I can read one of the other two again just to refresh your memory here. What do you want to hear? Can we have the rope? Yes, OK, that was the number one item, wasn't it? Yeah. The, uh, what was it? It was the length of tow rope. It said, four seats and wheels that travel itch could be the chance to make your pitch. That came from Jeff Capes and Hilary O'Neill. So three are here, the final three. One's got to be rejected. What one would it be? Um, the rope. You want to get rid of that, the one we just heard? Yeah. yeah. No problem? No. Okay, all right, that's going to be rejected. Let's see what we have here. Length of tow rope, four seats and wheels, the travel itch could be the chance. Make your pitch is what it says. <laughs> First glance, this could be a, uh, could this be a car, except the clue object was a tow rope, uh, which you'd hardly expect to need for a new car. Mm -hmm. Could this be the chance to make your pitch? Well, obviously, it's something you tow behind a car like a trailer. The important part of the clue was make your pitch, and that's exactly what you would have been doing with this. Well, it would have been your own complete home on wheels. There's an easy tow trailer containing a tent, providing full and comfortable accommodation for two. It's easy to erect and comes complete with a table and four chairs, an icebox, a stove, a sink and a barbecue. In fact, everything that the camping enthusiast could have possibly needed. Everything. Mm. Indeed, a, a terrific prize. I'm sure that one of the charities could have done with that, but not exactly a car, but it's gone. The final two are here. Being the final two, I can read them both again. Now, this was item number four. Came in from Chris Biggins, Felix Bowness, Blue Peter, Flag. Many channel crossings, there will be a dozen ways you can go to sea. This was item number f uh, five, which came in from Adrian Morehouse. He brought in a small presentation box of vodka and ouzo. Hot or cold, both could be fun. Place two for the price of one. So what one's going to stay? What one's going to go now? We're going to keep the ouzo. Keep the ouzo. You don't want the vodka, just the ouzo, do you? Yeah. I'll have right. <laughs> You'll have the vodka, all right, Janet. So you're going to keep this one? Yeah. And you're going to get rid of Blue Peter Flag? Yeah. yeah. Is that OK? Yeah. All right, audience? Yeah. Yes, they're very enthusiastic, too. It's going to go, though, is it? Yeah. OK, you're rejecting the Blue Peter Flag, which came in from Chris Biggins, Felix Bonest. Many channel crossings. There will be a dozen ways you can go to see. Here's what they said. Many channel crossings there will be, could, well, you could be thinking about a, some kind of boat maybe, particularly as the clue object was a Blue Peter flag flown by many ships. Blue Peter is also a very famous television program, of course. A dozen ways you can go to sea. With this prize, you've been able to switch channels and see television. things a dozen different ways because it's 12 television sets. Have a look. You could call this wall-to-wall -wall television. 12 14-inch colour models, which would make a wonderful present this season, offering crystal clear pictures at the touch of a button. All standing by to bring you those extra channels we're promised in 1989. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure the British Art Foundation would have liked that one, wouldn't they? But you've stuck with this one. OK, let's hope it's a good one for you. Adrian brought it in for you, the small presentation box of vodka and ouzo. And you're going to have the ouzo, you want the vodka, yeah? <laughs> Hot or cold, both could be fun. Place two for the price of one. Ah. Hot or cold, both could be fun. Well, that could start you thinking about something like a swimming pool, heated and unheated. The clue object was a box containing a mi miniature bottle of vodka and a miniature bottle of ouzo, which might suggest two different climates, maybe. That leads to place two for the price of one, and that's just what this is. Two places, it's a two-in-one holiday. Take a look at this prize. A unique two for the price of one holiday offering completely contrasting locations. First, there's a fabulous four-day visit to Moscow and Leningrad, where the sweeping grandeur of the building reflects the style of a country in which East meets West. Then, holiday number two takes you to the sunny south, to Lindos, on the Greek island of Rhodes in the Mediterranean where the temperature's as warm as the welcome you'll get from the locals. A couple of holiday breaks you'll find hard to forget.
Yeah. Granny's very impressed. Well, you can have the Uso. <laughs> you can have the vodka. <laughs> Let's go and get your tickets. Come on. Yes, lovely. Okay. There have it, Janet. Do it. Linda's here. How much they win? Five hundred pounds. They won five hundred pounds. There's the check. You've got that prize. We've got Kenny and Hazel. They're going to get a prize for their charity. Jean and Jenny. They're going to get a prize for their charity. What's going to happen to all these toys here, Adrian? Take them off to the children of Bernardos. Bernardos are going to get all the toys. That can't be bad. Superb. Lovely. I'd like to thank all of our guests, all of you for watching, and until we see you very, very soon, take care. Have a wonderful Christmas. Bye bye, everybody. Take care. Yeah. The night before Christmas, and look what Santa's bringing. The idea is to have 100 birds in 24 hours, except he's a stringer. Tapu claims to have seen birds and hasn't. Oh, you mean a liar? Looks like a thorn. It is a thorn. Duh. Have a care, Philip. It's deadly. Yes, I do have this weakness for very old things. Delighted to see you again. The flavour of good things to come, ITV, and the look of Christmas Eve. Starting over on Channel 4 now, this week's omnibus edition of Brookside. Here on Time T shortly, we go to ITN for the news with Sue Carpenter. Have you ever tried Kenko coffee? They're coffee experts. They've been selecting quality beans for over 60 years to achieve that superior, distinctive Kenko character. Now they've put all that coffee know-how, freeze-dried, in a jar. Smart, eh? New Kenko in a jar. The same quality of beans that give Kenko ground coffee its superior taste. Mmm. So, next time you make coffee, remember, that's all Kenko have ever done. New Kenko in a jar. The coffee expert's coffee. These are the two best-known types of drink with the word sherry on the label. One of them is made naturally from the juice of freshly pressed grapes. The other one isn't. One of them, by law, has to be allowed to mature in the wood for a minimum of three years. The other one doesn't. And only one of them has been made the same way for hundreds of years in the district of Jerez de la Frontera in Andalusia. The other one hasn't. One of them has the word sherry, produce of Spain, on the label. The other most certainly does not. So now you know how to tell the difference before you taste it. Real sherry comes only from Spain. New from Andrews. Paracetamol for a headache. Sodium bicarbonate for the stomach. A new answer to the morning after. You're watching Time T's television. Now the early evening news from ITN. The news from ITN. The Queen has sent a special message to disaster victims. In an unprecedented move, the Queen has recorded an extra message from Sandringham in addition to her usual Christmas broadcast to the Commonwealth. In it, she sends her prayers for the relatives and victims of Lockerbie, the Clapham Junction rail disaster and the Armenian earthquake.
all three came with great suddenness and destroyed the lives of many people who were looking forward to celebrating Christmas with their families and friends. So there are many homes today where the joy of Christmas has been darkened by a cloud of sadness and grief. Our hearts and prayers go out to those who have been injured and bereaved. And it is my hope that the eternal message of Christmas will bring some comfort in the hour of sadness. Around Lockerbie, relatives of the American victims have been visiting the scene. 235 bodies have now been found from the plane. 13 local residents, including three children, are still missing. And today, Pan Am and their...